So we started with four befores, six feet long, which we bought at the Home Depot for $12 a piece, roughly. And initially I was, as a carpenter, I was looking at how to do some compound miter cuts up top and everything, but eventually I simplified everything by just adding a four before in the middle to connect all the pieces and just doing a normal plunge cut with my circular saw. When you do a plunge cut with a circular saw on treated lumber, uh, it, it almost never comes out perfectly because treated lumber has between 60 and 70% moisture content. So literally, when you run a big screw in it, you'll see water gush out because of that moisture content. And you know, it's nominally three and a half inches by three and a half inches uh, for a four before. But on treated lumber, you might end up with three and five eighths by three and five eighths or three and three quarter by three and a half. I mean, you never know what you're gonna get. Nothing's square, everything's crooked. It's, it's complicated. So to do, like precise carpentry doesn't make sense. So that's why I ended up going with just the plunge cut. Ended up going with about 12 degrees on the uh, vertical, on those cuts. When I went online and looked uh, at some plans from other people, they were saying 10 degrees. Um, I think that 10 degrees would have been not enough. And ultimately when we got done, I kind of felt like the footprint was even a little bit too narrow. So I think that maybe even if I'm thinking about it the right way, uh, increasing from 12 to 13 or 14 degrees would be, make more sense if you wanted a wider footprint. But when you use a circular saw, it, it only cuts you know, roughly two and a half inches deep. And so when you're cutting a timber three and a half inches in thickness, you have to make a, a, a mark on one side, cut it, and then match that mark on the opposite side, flip it over and cut it again. And so sometimes those cuts don't align. In treated lumber, they never align, but it doesn't really matter. In the end, you screw it all together and it looks, it looks great. I didn't cut the feet. I just kind of started at the top and let it be what it, what it is on the bottom, knowing that we can dig out the dirt, knowing that one foot is longer than another or shorter than another, we can, we can modify that with just the, the soil that we're gonna be placing it on. If you were to put it on, uh, like a concrete surface or a flat solid surface, whether it be stone or whatever it may be, then you would want to probably go ahead and measure from the top and then cut the feet. And again, if you make that top cut with uh, 12 degrees, then you would want to use a 12 degree cut on the, on the feet to make the bottoms kind of run level with your surface. We ended up using three inch screws on the top. They're just deck screws, triple coated. And then I had some I think they're called headlock. They might be called timber lock. I think they're called headlock screws uh, in like a four and seven eighths variety, I think is what I had on hand. And so that's what I used to kind of lock everything together to the four before in the center that ties everything together. I was actually really surprised at how tight everything screwed together. I kind of felt like the, the bottom of the feet would be floppy uh, when I was done and that we were, we were going to have to use some horizontal members at the bottom to really stiffen everything up. But that's not what we found after we got the screws in and everything. I mean, you can move that thing around and it's stout. So now that the frame is done, Rox is going to wait for uh, as long as she can be patient, which I advised her to wait for a month in, in good, dry, uh, warm, weather for the treated material to dry out before she paints it. Aside from that, she's got something in her head as far as a top cap and uh, the finial, we'll call it. So we'll see what she does with that. I hope she plants a red bud under it. I think that's all I've got. <laughs>